Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 27. Lesson number 27. Third edition, third edition, day 27. 3027, 3 signifies the fact that we are in the third edition. The problems that we are about to do, the problems rather, the problems that we are about to do, they all deal with the concept of, they all deal with the notion of prime factors. And if you do not know how to figure out what prime factors are for that matter, or to, how to quickly figure out the prime factors of any given quantity, then on my, on my channel you will find a series of video series of videos simply titled basic math just simply titled basic math just type in basic math day 41 through 45 there are five videos there watch those videos and make sure that you know how to find prime factors because it's a topic that appears in the GRE on a regular basis let's do the very first problem we are on page number we are on page number 232 and we are going to work on problem number 5 on number 5 it says, 5a rather, it says, prime factors, prime factors of 100. They are asking us to find prime factors of 100. Let's just make sure that's what they are talking about, problem number 5. It says, what are, prime, what are the prime factors of 100? Let's find out, shall we? So here is our 100. And what we are looking for here, what we are looking for are prime numbers that happen to be factors of 100. And our job is to start with the smallest possible one that we can find. The smallest possible prime number that is a factor of 100 is 2. And 100 divided by 2 is going to give us 50. 50 is an even number. Let's go one more round. Let's do again. That's going to give us 25. The smallest prime number that is divisible by 25, that 25 is divisible by rather, is 5. And that's it. So what we find is that 100 is essentially 2 squared times 5 squared, which makes perfect sense because 2 times 5 is 10, of course it's just 10 squared. But 10 is not a prime number, so 10, even though 10 is a factor of 100, it is not a prime factor. You understand? So what are the prime factors of 100? It's essentially 2 and 5. That's it. 2 and 5 are the only two numbers. 2 and 5 are the only two numbers that are prime numbers and are also factors of 100 and hence the prime factors. 100 has only two prime factors, 2 and 5. Let's do the next one. This A, part A that they're talking about, problem number, problem number 5, part A, we're going to label that as part 1. We finish part 1, let's do part 2. And you'll see in a second why I'm doing it that way. The next part is asking us for 144. Let's find out what are the prime factors of 144. We're going to do 10 of them. Part 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. Even though the book only has few. The next one is 144. Let's do it here, 144. The smallest prime number that is a, that is a factor of 144 is going to be 2, because it's an even number. 14 has 7 2's and 4 has 2 2. It's an even number again. Let's do one more time. 7 has 3 2's, 3 2's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes 12 and 12 has 6 2's. We can go one more round, it's an even number still. 3 has 1 2. After we take away 2 from the 3, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 6 becomes 16 and 16 has 8 2's. Let's go one more round. We get a 9 and now we can no longer do 3 and it's 3 and 3. In other words, 144, 144 is 2 raised to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 raised to 4 and 3, 3 squared. So what are the prime factors of 144? It's just 2 and 3. 2, 2 and 3, 2 and 3 are the only two prime numbers. 2 and 3 are the only two prime numbers that happen to be factors of 144. Even though 144 seems like a very large quantity, it only has two prime factors. Let's do one more. Part, part 3. And the part 3 that we're going to do but what, what I'm calling here part 3 is actually problem number 7. It's problem number 7, which we're going to label here as part 3. And in problem number 7, they are asking us, 
let's just skip problem 6 for the time being. They're asking us to find prime factors of 585. 585. Let's do that, shall we? Let's do it right here. 585. See what we can do. 585. Let's divide by 5. Because it ends in a 5. If it ends in a 5 or a 0, it's divisible by 5. 5 has only one 5. 8 has only one 5. 1 5 is a 5, obviously. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 7 5s. And if you're incapable of doing the divisions orally, like I just did, then do it out on the, on the side here. It doesn't take that long. It's not a big deal. If you cannot do that, if, as I said, if you're incapable of doing division orally, just do it out. Here we go. We're going to redo it and watch, watch, listen to the language. How many 5 does 5 have? 5 has 1 5. 5 has 1 5. How many 5 does 8 have? 8 has 1 5. Uh, 1 5 is a 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 35. That 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 35. And 35 we know has 7 3's. What do we do next? What do we do next? Ah, 117. We realize that 117 is made up of 1 plus... If we, if we add up the digits, we have 1 plus 1 plus 7, that's 9. And we know that the, if the sum, S-U-M sum, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. Let's divide by 3. Well, if we could divide this, this quantity by 3, we could have divided this quantity by 3. Obviously, if 3 is a factor of 117, 3 must also be a factor of 585. Did we miss something? Yes, we did miss something. It's 585. 585. But well, that's 18. Since 18 is divisible by 3, 585 is divisible by 3. We should have started out with 3 over there. That's, that's the strict rule here. You have to start out with the smallest prime factor. We're just going to let it slide. It's not going to do any harm. So, 11 has 3 threes. 3 threes are 9. After we take away 9 from the 11, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 7, becomes 27, and 27 has 9 threes. Let's go one more round with 3. 3 has 1 3, and there we go. In other words, 585 is equal to 3 squared, you see, 3 squared times 5 times 13. And therefore, the prime factors of 585 are 3, 5, and 13. 3, 5, and 13. Let's do one more. That's it, we're done with this thing. Let's do part 4. Part 4 is going to be 156. You do it yourself. 156. We're going to pick up speed now. Do you understand? 156. Question is, what are the prime factors of 156? Let's find out. 156. We're going to divide by 2. 14 has 7 2's. Remaining one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. 16 has 8 2's. Let's do one more time. 7 has 3 2's. It becomes 18. 18 has 9. We can go one more time. It's 1 and 13. How oh, what do you know? It's 2, 3. 2, 3 and 13. 2, 3 and 13. It was, this one was 3, 5 and 13. Prime factors of 156 are 2, 3 and 13. 2, 3 and 13. Because 156, 156 is basically 2 squared times 3 times 13. And therefore the prime factors of 156 are going to be 2, 3 and 13. Let's do one more. Part 5. Part 5 is going to be 108. You do it. 108. What are the prime factors of 108? Let's do it here. 108. Divide by 2, we get 5 and a 4. Let's go by one more time. 5 has 2 2's. 5 has 2, two, two two's are 4's. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 4, becomes a 14. 14 has 7 2's. Let's 2 by 3, we get a 9. Let's 2 by 3, we get a 3. In other words, 108 is simply 2 squared times 3 cubed. It's 2 squared times 3 cubed and therefore prime factors of 108 are 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Prime factors of 108 are 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Let's do the next one. Part 6. Part 6. And this time we have 372. Even though 372 is something that we already did in the last video, I believe. Let's do it again. What the hell? 372. Let's do it here. The 
prime factors of 372 are, and we're, we're going to find out, 372, it's an even number, so let's start with 2. 3 has 1, 2, remaining 1 goes and joins 7, becomes 17, 17 has 8, 2, 8, 2 is a 16. After we take away 16 from the 17, we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins 2, becomes 12, 12 has 6 2's. Let's do one more, 18 has 9 2's and 6 has 3 2's. 9 and 3, let's divide by 3, we get a 3 and a 1, there we go. In other words, 372, 372 is equal to 2 squared times 3 times 31. 2 squared is equal to 372 is, is, is equal to 2 squared times 3 times 31 and therefore the prime factors of 372 are going to be 2, 3 and 31. 2, 3 and 31. 2, 3 and 31. And these kind of questions typically appear in the quant comp section, quantity comparison questions where they give you two quantities in the two column and they will simply tell you the number of prime factors of 372 in one column and maybe number of prime factors of 585. And our job is to make, make a list of all the prime factors of 372, make a list of all the prime factors of 585 and the question simply is which of these quantities has a bigger, prime, a bigger number of prime factors. Maybe they both have the same number of prime factors, or maybe one or the other, one has more, one has the other. Well, it's lost. That's what it is. But the answer in that situation will never going to be D, because there has to be a number. For example, here, 2, 3, and 31, it has 3. See, they wouldn't ask you something like that. They wouldn't ask you number of prime factors of 372 versus number of prime factors of 108, because it only has 2, and most people will assume that the smaller number has fewer. It's not the case. I forget what it was, 535. Oh, five, 585 that we just did. 585 also had three factors, three, three prime factors. So if they ask you 585, column A, column B, number of prime factors of 372 versus number of prime factors of 585. But how many prime factors does 372 have? Only 3. 1, 2, 3. Number of prime factors. How many? 3. How many prime factors did we find for 585? We found that 585, the prime factors of 585 were 3, 5 and 13. 3, 5 and 13 if you recall. It also has 3 prime factors. The answer in this case would be C. You have the same number of prime factors even though this quantity is so much larger than that one. Let's do the next one, Numbers, that was number 6. Let's do number 7. Number 7 we have, oh there we go, here's an interesting one. You do it, pause the video and do it yourself right now. Pause the video and see what you can do there, 7150. Do it yourself, you'll learn more. I'm going to take a quick break while you pause and unpause the video. Oh, what do we do here? 7,150 is a very large number. 7,150 7, is a very large number. We're not going to keep it like that. If we keep it like that, it will be too much work. Break it up into 715 times 10. All done. 10 we know only has two prime factors, 2 and 5. Now we have to find out the prime factor of 715. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. So it's not divisible by 3. Is it divisible by, oh it's divisible by 5, what am I thinking? 7 has 1 5, after we take away 5 from the 7 we have a remainder of 2, 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes a 21, 21 has 4 5, 4 5 is a 20, after we take away 20 from 21 we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins the 5 becomes a 15, and 15 has, 15 has 3 5's, 15 has 3 5's. Okay, we already established it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not divisible by 2, it's not, this quantity is not divisible by 3. How do we know that this quantity is not divisible by 3? Well, 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and since the sum of the digit is not divisible by 3, this quantity is not divisible by 3. But I hope you realize just now that we were wasting time just now. We had already established that this quantity is not divisible by 3. If 715 is not divisible by 3, no factors of 715 is going to be divisible by 3. If this quantity is not divisible by 3, then how in the bloody hell can this be divisible by 3? It's not possible. That was a waste of time. It's not divisible by 5. It's definitely not divisible by 7, because 7 would give us a remainder of 
remainder of 3, you have to go by prime numbers. You see how we are going? 2, 5, 2, sorry, 2 is not divisible by 2. Let me put the cap on so I can speak to you. This quantity, 715 we're talking, oh, 143 is what we're talking about. It's not divisible by 2. We go by prime factors. It's not divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 5. It is not divisible by 7. The next prime number is 11. Is it divisible by 11? Let's find out, shall we? Is it divisible by 11? Let's find out, shall we? We do 11 here. How many 11 does 14 have? 14 has one 11. After we take away 11 from the 14, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? That 3 goes and joins this 3 and becomes 33. Aha! And 33 has 3 11s. We are done. That's it. In other words, 7100. In other words, 7150 is equal to 2 times. Oh, there are going to be two fives. This five right here and that five right here. Five squared times 11 times 13. So what are the prime factors of 7150? But 2 and 5 we already established and here also we have 11 and 13. So prime factors of 7150 are 2, 5, 11 and 13. Voila. That's the number 8. That's the number 8. This 7 does no longer belong here because none of these problems are in the book. Do you understand? Do the, you do the next one. You do the next one. Again, pause the video. Do it yourself. Question is, what are the prime factors of 63,000? And if you're wondering how in the world they are going to ask that question on the exam, it's going to be a word problem. And how does a word problem incorporate prime factor of 63,000? I'm not going to do it here because it's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to put the, to write the entire problem and so forth. If you're interested in learning that, watch those five videos that I told you before. Just type in basic math. Day 41 through 45. Towards the end of that 4 to 5 series, you're going to begin to see the, something difficult like that. Let's do it, shall we? Let's erase this part. We don't know what the prime factors are. Again, pause the video. Do the problem yourself and then, then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Again, the trick here is that we're not going to keep 63,000 as 63,000. Let's break it up. Let's break it up into 63 and 1,000. And 1,000 we know is just 10 cubed. And 10 cubed is simply 5 times 2 cubed. In other words, 1,000 has prime factors of 2 and 5. Those are the only prime numbers that are factors of 1,000. Nothing else. There is no other prime number that is a factor of 1000. 1000 has only two prime factors, 2 and 5, because 2 times 5 is 10, and 1000 is just 10 times 10 times 3, uh, 10 times 10 times 10. In other words, 1000 is simply a thousand is simply 2 cubed times 5 cubed. It only has two prime factors, 2 and 5. 2 and 5. Let's work on 63. 63 is also very easy. Divide by 3 and we are done. There you go. Two, oh, it's, it's too simple. That's it. There was nothing to do. So what are the prime factors of 63,000? Prime factors of 63,000 are 2, 3, let's circle them, 2 right here, 2, 3, 5, don't miss anything, 5, 5, and finally, 20. if it's 21, we are in trouble. Oh, it's 21, bloody hell, we have to go more. I almost made a boo-boo. I almost made a boo-boo, didn't I? We can't stop at 21. 21 is not a prime number. So 63,000, 63,000 turns out is equal to, that's why it's always important to pay attention, is equal to 2 cubed times, we have a, okay, watch. Watch, we, we have two threes, so three squared times five cubed times 7. I hope I didn't miss anything. 63,000 is, is equal to 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 cubed times 7. So the prime factors are 2, 3, 5 and 7. 5 and 7. Don't make a silly mistake by saying uh, 21 is a prime factor of 1000. 21 is a factor of 
63,000. 21 is a factor of 63,000, but it is not a prime number. Therefore, it does not qualify as a prime factor. 21 is simply a factor of 63,000, but it is not a prime factor because it's not a prime number. Let's do the next one, the penultimate one. The penultimate one. And you do it again yourself, 147,000. Now that you know the trick, it's very straightforward. Now that you know the trick, it's very straightforward. Raise these answers so that you don't get confused. So it's going to be 147,000, which we're going to break it up into 147 times 1,000. 1,000 is already done here. Let's work on 147. 147 divided by 7, we get 2 and a 1. Oh, this is too simple. There we go. Prime factors of 147,000 are going to be 2, 5, oh I left out 3 here, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Which is why it's always good at it to first write it down like this so we don't miss anything. 147,000 we just found out was equal to 2 cubed times 5 cubed times 7 squared and times 3 and now we can put them in order now we can put them in order 2, 3, 5 and 7 2, 3, 5 and 7 very last one very last one list all the prime factors all of them list all the prime factors of one million my god we're going to be here forever one million we're going to be here forever and ever. It's a very large number. How are we going to? How in the world are we going to find all the prime factors of one million? That's very simple. There's your one million, which is simply ten raised to six. We know that. It is simply ten raised to six, which is simply five times two, or if you like, two times five. Two times five raised to six. In other words, 1 million is equal to 2 raised to 6 times 5 raised to 6. And therefore, 1 million, prime factors of 1 million are just 2 and 5. 1 million has only 2 prime factors, 2 and 5. 1 trillion has only 2 prime factors, 1 and 5. Do you understand? It's, if it's 1 with a bunch of zeros, it is simply a multiple of 10. If it's an exact multiple, by multiple of 10, I don't mean 71, I meant 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times, oh, that's what I meant. If that's the case, it only has two prime factors, 2 and 5. 10 has two prime factors, 2 and 5. 100 has two prime factors, 2 and 5. 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million, trillion, you get the idea. That was it. We did 10, oh, that was number 10, wasn't it? That was the very last one. That was number 10. I'll see you tomorrow, where we will do... Well, we left out problem number six. We left out problem number six. Let me make a note of it here someplace. Problem number six talks about prime numbers. Prime numbers. And if you're interested, it's asking us to recognize which one of these are prime numbers or not. But if you're interested in learning all the prime numbers from 1 through 100 so that you don't miss anything, what happens typically is that when people are asked to make a list of prime numbers, they usually make one of two mistakes. One of they usually make one of two mistakes. Either they look at a number and they don't recognize that it is not a prime number, and they end up putting in the list of prime numbers, or they leave out a number in the list that actually belongs in the in the list that actually is a prime number. You obviously do not want to make either of those mistakes. If you want to learn how to recognize prime numbers one through one hundred, which is what problem number six is, I'm not going to do it here. I'm simply going to do, tell you what to watch here. Just type in. Just type in. Dave 79, GRE, GRE math, day 79, GRE math, math, day 79. Do you understand? And today's work that we did here, day 3027, if you want, if you want to watch the original solutions, all of these problems that we did here, they all appeared in the original edition, the first edition, and if you want to watch the original solutions to the problems, just type in, you will find all of them, just type in day 81, 
82, 81, 80, 81 or 82. Those are the three days that we did today. The work that we did today was done on the on the three three separate videos, day 80, 81 and 82. In addition to that, day 79 will teach us how to spot a prime number. That's what problem number six is about. Okay? Bye now.